Hi, everybody. My name is Kevin Newman, and I'm grateful to be asked to uh, participate uh, in the gala this year. I was a uh, anchor for Global National in 2006 when we uh, hosted a week of shows from Kandahar and southern Afghanistan. And that changed my life and opened my eyes. And ever since, I've been pretty deeply involved with the veteran community and uh, stories that deal with Afghanistan. And right now I'm part of a volunteer group of veterans, journalists, aid workers, NGO workers that are working like hell to try to pull people out of Afghanistan who have applied to come here because they were part of our mission in Afghanistan, not only for soldiers, but also for journalists. And I'm happy to introduce a good friend of mine who I was introduced through, through YouTube actually nine years ago when Chris Dupuis uh, was very bravely pushing the notion of PTSD uh, into the world and into our consciousness. And Chris is joining me now from his uh, his office at Cadence. Chris, how are you, Chris? Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's a, it's a great honor to be here. Yeah, so tell me, remind me actually, of uh, your service in Afghanistan. I had uh, the great honor of serving our country in Afghanistan on Task Force 308. Um, that was in 2008 and 2009. Uh, I worked out of patrol base Spurwangar um, and uh, Cobb Zangabad. And now through Cadence, which is a, a healthcare facility in Newmarket, you're, you're, you're still very involved with veterans and, and trying to heal some of the wounds there. Um, I've got uh, my wife and I, we opened up a mental health clinic for veterans specifically. Uh, as I found the Call to service does never end. Um, you know, it's something It's something that we're born with. This is something that I love to do. Um, you know, sending out the signal to troops that they're not alone, I believe, uh, you know, is the ultimate for me. So uh, I'm able to do that every day. And yeah, man, you, you've definitely done that and, and continue to do it to this day up at Greenstone and a few other facilities that... Uh, that 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 certainly help and, and man has this last four months ever been tough huh because you know what's happened in afghanistan and what we've witnessed uh through news media reports and online through Kabul. um i know i've been affected i know my journalism colleagues have been deeply affected that reported from afghanistan what what, what have you seen among your crew well the thing is a lot of people might not consider is did we as the individual soldier understand and know what the war was even about uh, when we went so I would be uh, of that population I didn't really know I just kind of showed up I'm, I, I signed up for this stuff um, those people did bad things and we're going to make them pay type deal we didn't really understand all the schematics so when when everything started to go down um, with the withdrawal, Kevin, uh, we all kind of realized our importance there in reflection um, in that we did see families, um, children, uh, you know, uh, and the pattern of life seemed pretty nice. But compared to what we're seeing right now on the news and in the media, um, they don't have that freedom anymore that, that we gave them for 20 years. Yeah, especially the women, man. I, I was watching a report on CNN about uh, young girls that are being sold uh, into slavery, basically, for old men uh, just to put food on the table for the rest of the family. And we've seen, you know, women in Kabul uh, marching in opposition, not so much lately because, you know, the fear is starting to spread there. And I, and I think of you guys, and like when I was over there, to a man and a woman, they would say, you know, we're here for the kids. We're, we're here for the women. We're here for the girls. Um, I would imagine that, that many of your brothers and sisters are traumatized uh, by what they are experiencing now, knowing um, that, you know, their reason for going is, is disintegrating. Hmm. And we're noticing the reason that we went at the same time that it's disintegrating. Um, I can look back, I can remember back to um, going through a village, it, it, it was pretty protected, but there was little girls there um, dressed for school and everything like that. Uh, you know, that seemed a bit significant to me at the time, but uh, now in reflection, that, that's, that's huge. It's huge, right? 
understanding how um, the oppression works over there. So. Yeah, and, and you know, the other thing is the Taliban probably overlooked the fact that um, the last time they ruled, there was no social media. So the cell networks are still operating there because the Taliban needs them for control uh, for its own purposes. But we're all witness now to to the disintegration there and 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 the frustration of 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 a lot of people that worked alongside you guys and alongside my colleagues and development aid workers. Um, you know, I, I, as I mentioned at the top, I've been part of this volunteer effort, and I know you've been active as well trying to bring those interpreters and local staff out um, for Canadians that don't understand how personal and intimate that relationship was in Afghanistan. Can you can you flesh it out maybe with the story about your own Terp or what you're hearing from other guys? Well, could you could you imagine the relationship you might get with somebody that saves your life? Um, I That's how invaluable uh, the interpreters were us like saved a lot of Canadian lives and and it doesn't have to be um you know as heroic as you might picture it carrying a Canadian off the battlefield or something like that no literally they'll listen to the radios and tell us what they're talking about so we can avoid big things um so uh it, it they're an amazing people they fit in so easily with us uh, well because the they point. they've they've been with us and I think you know that's the difference when you know, if people are fatigued by, you know, refugee issues and, and all the rest of that, um, these guys have Canada in them. You know, they speak our language. They they know our Tim Hortons nonsense. They, you know, they they are culturally attuned to us, and that was sort of the the tr the bond of trust that not only soldiers developed with the local staff there, but but in in, in journalism circles as well. And I think that's why it affects us so deeply right now in that the trust that we built and the trust that we earned and the trust that they gave us, sometimes it feels like we're not returning that trust right now. The Canadians uh, that were there, we were, we were witness to um, how they are. And, and honestly, there's way more in common that we share with them than uh, then they share with other Afghans probably now because they're younger. They grew up with us. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I don't know. I've never met uh, more hospitable people in, in, in general. Like they were always asking us to come have tea and all that. Like they meant it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and especially during those circumstances uh, where there's, you know, a platoon of soldiers walking around with guns. Right. Um, but extremely hospitable um, people. And yeah, even even the way they address you, right? Mr. Chris, Mr. Kevin, yeah. there's a formality yeah. to it and the whole culture of tea, which is so critical to uh, to that society. Remember, but you know, we, go ahead. Yeah, I remember um, we got like a whole bunch of haagen ice cream at Spurwingar. Uh, I don't remember. One of the troops had a connection or something. Yeah, like I won't that. ask how yeah. you got that there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but big tubs of it. And um, we, uh, the local nationals that we had working on the base, they couldn't help it. <laughs> they <laughs> they were all over this stuff. Oh, right? man, and just seeing their eyes light up. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I'm seeing the same thing now. Some There are some people who have gotten out. Our, our, our group of volunteers has been able to extract... Uh, about 300 applicants uh, out of Afghanistan since the Taliban took control. It's been hard work. Um, it's been 24 seven. And, and uh, I, I had the opportunity to go up to Ottawa to meet uh, a couple of them who were with buddies of mine over in Afghanistan and to see them at a restaurant, you know, be confronted with the plenty of Canada and, you know, not knowing what to order on a menu other than kebab. And then to see pictures of them fishing and um really trying to dig into canadian society but all the things that the guys told them about over there that they get to experience now that we need to get a lot more of them out uh, but the resettlement is I, I think and that's something the true patriot love is deeply in, involved in fundraising for and and helping um other charities in, in the country uh, accomplish but the resettlement is going to be quicker because um we know these people and we've met these people and we've worked to get them out of there. So when you think of, of all of the 
um, challenges that they face, you know, culturally, it, it's not it's not going to be that big, is it? Because there's guys like you everywhere that are saying we're here for you as soon as you arrive. Yeah, um, guys like me that can't wait for them to arrive and uh, show them around, um, show them our culture, uh, you know, be ambassadors to Canada and to our people. Um, they will fit in like like nobody's business. Um, you know, they're 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 from a culture that uh, believes in uh, something called the Pastor Wally. Um, that means that when we are their guests, they will protect us um, up to with up to and including their own lives. Uh, that's that's a big commitment, and that's what um, that's in their blood, right? uh and, and it's something sacred so for us to show them around you know that means that's going to mean a he heck of a lot to them and to their families so uh, you know i can't i can't wait for those days um maybe maybe even get them connected uh with a, our own peer support groups and stuff like that and you know it's it's good for it's good for us as well the troops right to to help understand everything that was going on there um now we get to look at afghanistan in the past tense not just our own experience and trying to make sense of it but it's no and I, I would i would think that the reason so many veterans are involved in this moment in time is because it is also healing for them because there's nothing worse than feeling that you know you're helpless you can't do something so you know it's been it's been amazing watching how many um people are risking their own mental health at this moment knowing that this is stirring up a lot of stuff but um knowing that they need to make a difference and i'm sure you're seeing that amongst the the people you counsel to most of the uh most of the troops that that um, I ever talked to, I consider as sheepdogs. And uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people know, you know, that uh, that analogy, and I, I encourage you to look it up. Uh, I like to think I'm a sheepdog, but I'm not sure I'm worthy of it. <laughs> you are, you are, yeah, I believe that you are, Kevin, uh, very <laughs> much so. Um, so uh, with that said, um, to see to, to see and watch them in distress was extremely hard to watch. Um, so yeah as soon as we get our hands on them it's it's go time right it's like this is this is what we were made for um that's something that we're born with uh to help to protect um you know did i necessarily know what i was helping and protecting back then mm, questionable yeah we get we get it we understand but right now it's very very clear um and that's a whole different reality that we're facing you know, one of the privileges of, of being on the inside of this volunteer group and is that people who don't normally work together are working together. And I mean, soldiers and journalists and the amount of respect that I have for the operators and the soldiers and their understanding of information from the ground. I mean, remember, we have no Canadian diplomats in Afghanistan currently. There is no Canadian government presence there right now. So it's it's us. It's it's people like you. It's people like me. It's 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 organizations um, like True Patriot Love, like the Veterans Transition Network, like Cadence, like everybody's sort of pulling together for a common cause. And you know, if if we're frustrated about our country, sometimes um, I am far from frustrated about the people uh, who make up the country and how when the right thing needs to be done. Uh, we're capable of, of of pulling together. That was a really amazing thing to see. I remember um, having uh, goosebumps uh, at the sight of my my friends, my brothers uh, in contact. Um, it was a real chance for Canada to show its uh, show its teeth, if you will. You need to be you need to be tough. It's a tough world out there, you know, dom domestically, we don't really want to see it, but there's a lot of eyes in Canada that have seen it, including you, Kevin, <clears throat> and, and, and the soldiers. Uh, those, those are Canadian eyes. Those are Canada's stories. Um, that's how it was put to me when I started sharing. It's not my story. It's Canada's story, right? I was just, I was just the eyes and ears on the ground at that time. Um, so... So let's keep writing that story. Um, there's a lot more work to be done. Um, getting people out of Afghanistan, 
uh, before the Taliban probably closes that ability. Um, and I know there's a lot of people working hard at it. Uh, it's it's Remembrance Day. Um, I always go and I always stand there. And you know, I have family that have um, that have served in in various wars. But because I know dudes like you, I always think of you guys. And I think this Remembrance Day, um, I'm I'm going to spend most of my thoughts and 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 share most of my thoughts for the the, the people who are still behind who I desperately hope we can get here. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, this um, Remembrance Day uh, definitely has a, a different flavor um, with the the end of the Afghan conflict, if you will, or effort. Um, so I, I too will be reflecting a lot um, this year about Afghanistan and some of uh, my friends who paid the price and who uh, continued to pay the price. Stay well, buddy. Thanks, Kevin.